It's time for Washington Fish Quest. This episode, Marine Biotoxins of Washington State. Hey everybody, I'm down here at uh, Roosevelt Beach. Uh, it's a two-day opening in Mock Rocks here in the middle of May, which is pretty weird because it's my first time razor clamming this season. It opened in October of last year, then it was closed due to marine biotoxins, the moke acid all year, then opened again uh, just for two days here at the end of May, so pretty weird. But, uh, you know, I get a lot of questions about marine, marine biotoxins, and you've seen me razor clam before, so, I mean, if you watch my channel. So I figured this might be a good, good video just to talk about the three different kinds of marine biotoxins that can close shell fishing here in Washington State. And also I'll uh, throw in Vibrio, which isn't a marine biotoxin, but it is a, you know, a sickness people can get from uh, eating shellfish. So something that all marine biotoxins have in common is they're produced by a uh, microscopic algae. Shellfish eat, eat the algae, but it doesn't affect them. However, it can do anything uh, for making humans really ill to dead. <laughs> so big effect on us uh, and it cannot be destroyed by cooking or freezing uh, sometimes these things are incorrectly called red tide so uh, red tide is caused by uh, big algae bloom however quite often those are actually not even harmful uh, as far as uh, their impact to humans go so, so I mean sometimes they could be but uh, I know public health officials don't really like the term red tide simply because it's uh, you know, people will think that that's what you need to actually uh, worry, which is not the case. Well, it's always good to get to the clam. The clam grounds one to two hours early. It's only a negative point one today, so we're only here about an hour early. Uh, but one of the reasons is because I forgot my net back in the truck that holds clams in, so I'm walking back. But while I do, let me tell you about the first of the marine biotoxins we're going to cover today, which is domoic acid, aka amnesic shellfish poisoning. Now it is, uh, it's, it's produced by a type of diatom. Uh, diatoms are pretty cool, little single-celled creatures. They are, their cell wall is made of silica, and uh, yes, as in glass, they're the only uh, creatures like this on the planet. So, with ASP or domoic acid. You know, the mild symptoms would just be like really bad food poisoning. However, it can be some scary stuff. An extreme case could, uh, you know, damage your motor skills, uh, kill you. Uh, but like a really kind of scary scenario is it can just destroy your short-term memory. I'm no brainologist, so I don't know the technical term for this. But it can basically uh, make most or maybe even sort of all of your short-term memory cells just kind of fire all, all at once. And that, that has happened, uh, where people have basically uh, completely lost their short-term memory. So they, they retain their long-term memory, but they, uh, you know, so they remember everything up until the point that it happened. It's kind of like a 50 first dates, you know, that sort of, you know, type of scenario. I'm back at the truck now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's no good. All right, so that was the first and maybe the scariest, but we'll see. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, in the middle here, do diuretic shellfish poisoning. It is uh, produced by a dinoflagellate. And, uh, you know, everybody knows a dinoflagellate's a dinoflagellate because it just loves to flagellate. flagellate. No, actually, I used to think it used to have this little uh, horn on the top of their heads. Here's a chart of them. Don't they look cool, folks? But uh, I guess I guess not all of them do, so I'm not I'm honestly quite sure what makes a, a dinoflagellate a dinoflagellate. But at any rate, they produce them. And diuretic shellfish poisoning, it's a relative newcomer. Uh, the first case we got, I think in the whole U.S., but certainly on the West Coast, was off of Salt Spring Islands in B.C. And then in 2011, three people got sick out of Squim Bay with it. Uh, the good news, though, I mean the relative good news, is... It's just like really bad food poisoning. So it's sort of like getting Vibrio, like for, from eating like oysters that weren't handled properly or, or you know, were too hot. So at least you don't die from it or anything like that. Uh, but you might just have like really bad food poisoning for a couple of days. All right, I'm back. I still think it's a little high for the clams to really be showing, especially after Saturday, but uh, I'm gonna focus on that. Then I'll talk about PSP and Vibrio to close out the video. All right, it's such a uh, high, t high tide relatively for a razor claim dig. I'm actually in the water here. Oh, look at that. 
Oh, you can't really see him, but a couple of crabs making the love. Oh, there's one. Lucky if I got it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. First razor clam of the 2020-21 season and it's May 2021. Got a nice little sandbar. So far I haven't seen anybody but me get a clam. It's uh not so hot, I think, because the tide is so high. But it is about an hour before low, so I think it's gonna be okay. Ah, it's really tough digging today. You know, it's I'm, I'm out here in the water, and uh, you know, some techniques to use when it's tough digging like this is sometimes when the water's receding, you'll see little bees, and that's their neck sticking up. I'm not seeing a lot of that because they're so deep, so I'm just out here pounding. A lot of the times, you'll just see a, a barely a shift in the sand, you know, and you just gotta kind of roll the dice and you know, and dig and see if that's a clam. I would suspect more people today will not limit than, than get their limit. Well, that's 15. I gotta actually scurry back to work here. My buddy Peter's driving. He's down there and he's got 14 right now. But yeah, it's good sized clams, some moss backs. I grew up calling them because they got this, they're big and they got these like black tinges. Hopefully you can see that now I'm a little backlit. Whew. Well, as I hurry back to the truck, I'll go ahead and talk about uh, paralytic shellfish poisoning, which actually can come from a number of different microscopic algae can produce it. So paralytic shellfish poisoning is what it sounds like. It can paralyze you. So, you know, a mild case might just be cramps and stuff, but a severe case can have you dead in 30 minutes. <laughs> it sounds like I'm trying to scare you straight or something. But again, uh, so early signs are tingling of the uh, lips, lips and fingers, you know, tongue. And then you might start feeling it going up your limbs. If you have even the faintest sign of paralytic shellfish poisoning, I think it's worth to call them, you know, get a medical professional in there. Because although there is no antidote for any marine biotoxin, you know, you might need to be hooked up to a respirator or something. Because uh, it can, it'll eventually freeze up your chest muscles if you got a really bad case, and that's how it gets you. So this is kind of third-hand anecdotal information, but a friend of mine who was actually, uh, I'd call him a marine, marine biotoxin ecologist, I guess, if that's what they're called. Uh, he talked to a survivor of a severe case of PSP and it, uh, he said the guy was in a hospital bed, couldn't move, for, uh, this might sound crazy and I don't know if this is, you know, like I say, it's a information at this point, but, you know, he was, uh, it seemed like he was brain dead, but he said he could hear everybody around him, like he, you know, he heard everybody talking about him and his medical state and what to do, and then he just came out of it. And, uh, you know, slowly, but full recovery. So, if you ever think you got the PSP, very dangerous, but, you know, get to a medical professional as soon as you can. And uh, I'm almost back to the truck here, so I'll cover Vibrio on the car ride back, which is not a marine biotoxin. All right, so actually I'm back at the parking ride here. Got to go into work, like I said. So real quick on Vibrio, unlike uh, the three marine biotoxins, Vibrio is actually a bacteria that, you know, it's it's in shellfish, but most people associate it with oysters. And it's just, uh, it multiplies at, at a higher temperature. So, you know, a lot of people use 60 degrees as kind of like that temperature, but I, I don't think it has to be 60 necessarily. You know, it's, it's a naturally occurring thing in the water, so... Just keep your oysters cold, and yeah, when it's spring, summer, fall, when it's when it's a little hotter, uh, you gotta cook those cook those puppies to uh, 145. And Vibrio is uh, basically just like a terrible, terrible food poisoning. I've heard it can be mild to extreme, but nobody I've ever met who's had Vibrio has been like, oh, well, what a nice uh, 
mild case of Vibrio, they always say it's, it was like the worst thing ever, and uh, a lot of them can't even look at an oyster after that. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Uh, there you go. That's the four, well, actually, it's the three marine biotoxins of Washington, uh, you know, that can really get you. And then Vibrio. All those things are natural occurring, by the way. I have some people, uh, you know, associate those with pollution. And although there may be man-made factors that make them worse, uh, they are all naturally occurring. Uh, there, there is some study that ocean acidification might be uh, making uh, marine biotoxins worse, you know, or, or more prolonged into the winter. All right, now that I've maybe freaked you out about marine biotoxins, just know that here in Washington State, we're super lucky. We live in a, a, not only a great part of the country, but a great part of the world when it comes to marine biotoxins. Uh, the Washington State Department of Health's marine biotoxin uh, network, uh, monitoring network, is world class. You know, it's, uh, it's a bunch of local governments, tribes, you know, state. Uh, nonprofit, I believe, private landowners, you know, they all sample uh, for marine biotoxins in different shellfish beds around the state. And uh, I say it's world class because, you know, we export over in Washington state over a hundred million dollars worth of shellfish around the world. You know, Asia, you know, China's a big buyer there, uh, Europe, and they all have their own very strict standards. And so uh, commercial growers, uh, you know, working with, with the state have to meet those standards in order to have their product be viable, you know, and sold in those places. Uh, you know, in addition, of course, to protecting us, recreational uh, harvesters. So as long as that program has been in place, there have been no deaths in Washington state. And even those illnesses I spoke about, and the DSP illnesses, I think, I don't know if I mentioned, but that was in Squim Bay. I'm pretty sure that, that those were harvested in a closed area. I, I could be wrong on that, so I'm not 100%. But it's a very good program, uh, you know, so go ahead and, and harvest your shellfish. Uh, you know, it's, it's safe. With crab, uh, you know, as long as it's open. With crab, uh, you know, they accumulate it in their gut, by the way. So if you're worried about that, just, you know, clean your crab before you cook them. You know, I grew up just throwing them in a pot, and sometimes I still do, but if I have any, you know, if it's an area that was recently reopened or something, then I will make sure to clean them before I uh, put them in the pot. Well, so there you go. Uh, hopefully next year, marine biotoxins won't be such a big deal with uh, the razor clams, and the, we can have a nice long season opposed to this very, very truncated one. However, I was grateful to get my 15. So thank you so much, and I'll see you next time on Washington Marine Biotoxins uh, Anti-Quest. Oh, I'm back already. I totally forgot. In every episode of Washington Shellfish Quest uh, that I'm harvesting, you know, clams or oysters or mussels or whatever, I always do put, uh, you know, in the description the, num the number for Department of Health and their, their clickable maps. So there's three real good ways to check, uh, you know, if, if a beach is open or not. You can either call Department of Health uh, during uh, business hours. You can either call their 1-800-BIOTOXINS hotline that has a recorded message, or you can go online and, and check their clickable maps and click on the beach you're going to, and it'll tell you if the beach is open and if they're, you know, basically in season, I mean, or if it's, uh, you know, closed because of marine biotoxins. So there you go. Those are some great resources, and I'm going to put them down there in the description just as always. So thank you so much, and have a safe uh, and healthy time eating the shellfish. <laughs>